Let's start with the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Seahawks wildcard game in the NFC. Fourth seed Philadelphia Eagles are hosting the fifth seed Seattle Seahawks. In my playoff picture, I have projected Seahawks are going to win by 7 to 10 points. They met six weeks ago with Seattle winning 17 to 9. Their, Philadelphia's passing game is okay because they have Zach Ertz and other passing, but also Zach Ertz, Alshon Jeffrey, and Deshaun Watson, not Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Jackson are all injured. Their running game is okay too because they have Jordan Howard and Boston Scott with Miles Sanders still questionable. Now let's talk about Seattle. Seattle has a really good passing game with DK Metcalf as a power passer, catcher, and um, Tyler Lockett as a deep threat. And their running is also turning really good because they have Marshawn Lynch, who is a really good old nostalgic person who used to be with the Seahawks, so he's familiar with the coach and all. And also, they with Carson and um, Rashad Penny injured, it will be hard, but I feel like they'll find a way to come through. I have the Bills winning against the Texans. Now let's talk about the Houston Texans, which are hosting the Buffalo Bills. Houston Texans have a tanked ranked offense, 10th ranked offense, which is pretty good. They have a good run strategy with Carlos Hyde and Duke Johnson. They also have a good pass strategy too. The Deshaun Watson to DeAndre Hopkins duo is one of the best in the NFL to this day. But their defense is really bad. In the red zone, they're ranked 32, which is dead last. And in third down, they're ranked 31st, which is second to dead last. But let's talk about the Bills defense now. Jordavius White, one of the best players in the Bills defense and in the whole NFL, has more interceptions than anyone in the Bills defense. Their pass defense is one of the best, third ranked in the whole NFL. But their run, but when running backs catch the ball, they're one of they're like really bad at that. They're tied 19th. But against the run defense, which is just running the ball, they're ranked ninth. So when the Texans have the ball and the Bills are on defense, it's like a strength versus a strength. But when the Bills have the ball, it's like a bad versus a bad. Next, let's talk about the Vikings versus the Saints. Drew Brees, who is the Saints quarterback, has 27 touchdowns and four interceptions. 27 touchdowns is a little low for him because he missed a lot of games recently. But he has the most completion rate percent in the whole NFL. First place with 74.3%. Michael Thomas, his best wide receiver and his go-to wide receiver, has 1,725 yards and nine touchdowns. And he, Michael Thomas also broke the NFL record for most receptions in one regular season, which is 149. Mike, Drew Brees also has other reliable wide receivers, like Jared Cook and Alvin Kamara. Minnesota's past is also pretty good. Yards per, for yards per game, it's 15th, and its rating overall is 10th, and yards per attempt is 8th. Pretty good, right? Now, receptions allowed to running backs, 8th, which is pretty good. T- tight ends, 11th, not bad. But to receivers, it's 25th. It also has an 8th most yards to wide receivers. But Minnesota also has a good amount of sacks. It has 25 sacks, but only, most of them also go to Hunter and Griffin with Hunter getting 14.5 sacks and Griffin getting eight sacks. But New Orleans Saints have third most sacks, but um, fifth in QB QB pressure. But Minnesota is not good at QB pressure because they're 25th place. But New Orleans Saints, they're fifth, so they're good. Cameron Jordan, one of their best defensive players, has 15.5 sacks, pretty good. And also, Minnesota has 28 sacks allowed, which is tied fifth. So it'll be a rough game, but in my projection, I have Saints winning. Let's hope that works. 
finally, we're done with the wildcard games. We have the Titans versus the Pats. In my playoff projection, I have the Tennessee Titans winning against the Patriots. The Titans have one of the best offense in the NFL, with Ryan Tannehill being one of the best too. Ryan Tannehill has, is number one in yards per attempt. He's also number one in yards per carry. He's also number one, sorry, yards per catch. And he's also number one in the rating. So he's number one overall. And no wonder this because Ryan Tannehill has really good wide receivers, such as A.J. Brown and Jonah Smith. But A.J. Brown will be covered by Stephen Gilmore, one of the best defensive players in the whole NFL and is suggested to be NFL Defensive Player of the Year. Gilmore has 53 tackles and 6 interceptions, which is number one in the whole NFL. New England Pasty, which is one of the best. It's number one rating, number one pass per game, number one touchdowns, number one pass yards per game, number one and number two in takeaways, and with Pittsburgh being number one. And that's also good for the Patriots because Tennessee has allowed 56 sacks allowed, which is 30th in the whole NFL. And New England is 8th in QB pressure and tied 7th in sacks. The Titans have a good passing game with it, with Brown, Jonas Smith, and many others. And a good run with what with the best, which is okay. And the Pats have an okay run with Sony Mitchell and Rex Burkhead being okay, and James White. And Sony Mitchell has been doing badly, but he's doing good, so they're a little better than okay. The Pats D has allowed 4.2 yards per carry which is 16th in the NFL, a pretty respectable number. Titans have a good run D and an okay pass D. But in my projection, I have the Titans to win, and I hope that goes well.